Hi, we're going to talk about a buffer lab. There are really two tasks in this lab. Number one, you have to make a buffer, and I'm going to show you the math, how to do that. And number two, you have to test the buffer and see what the buffering range is. So here is our task, the example. Uh, we want to create a buffer with a target pH of a 6.8. Now the supplies that we have is that we're going to have some carbonic acid, and that comes from this tonic water. And we're going to have a sodium bicarbonate, which is just baking soda right there. Um, so we want to, in the right proportions, mix those two substances to create a buffer. It's going to give us the acid, which is the carbonic acid, and the hydrogen carbonate, which is going to be the conjugate base. Now I wrote down the Ka value for our carbonic acid. Um, in order to um, make a buffer, we're going to use Henderson Hasselbach. So let's write down that formula and that's going to drive and lead us in how to determine to determine what we need of each of these to make a buffer um, that is a 6.8. Okay, uh, so here's our henderson hasselbach We have pH equals pKa plus the log of the conjugate base divided by the acid. Okay, pKa, I've got the Ka. Let's go ahead and do the negative log. Remember, pKa equals the negative log of Ka. Um, so we're going to have the negative log of 4.2 times 10 to the minus 7. When you put that in your calculator, we're going to get a pKa equal to 6.4. So we're pretty close, pretty close. Remember when you're doing a buffer, you're trying to find um, a Ka, that when you do pKa, it gets you a value really close to the pH that you want. So we're pretty close. Um, now, to make this with the tonic water and uh, the sodium bicarbonate, we need to know this ratio. How many moles of base do we need to um, for a certain mole of acid? We need to know that ratio. Um, so really our unknown right here is that ratio. That's what I'm trying to find. Then I can actually make that. So let's go ahead and plug this in uh, to Henderson Hasselbach. We are going to have the 6.8 pH equals my pKa which is a 6.4 um, plus log of the conjugate base over acid. Subtract 6.4 from both sides. And we are going to get 0.4 equals log of conjugate base over the acid. Now I want to find that ratio, so we have to get rid of the log. Let's raise both of these to uh, the base 10. And we're going to get a 0.4. That's actually going to be, let me, oh, let's have my paper right here make sure that I'm remembering correctly, I'd work this out. Um, yeah, we're going to end up with a 0.4 over one, remember that's understood to be over one, um, equals the conjugate base over acid. I want to double check that really quick. Um, so if we do log 0.4, oh actually, that is going to give us a 2.5. It's like there's no way 10 to the 0.4 is, um, so let's change that, sorry about that. So this is what it gives us. It's going to give us, there we have it. It's going to give us a 2.5. Um, so we've got 2.5 over one. Look at the, what this tells us. It means that we need 2.5 moles of conjugate base for every one mole of acid. Let me say it again. It gave us our ratio, this is really important. 2.5 moles of conjugate base for every one mole of acid. And so you're thinking, okay, great, but how do we do that? Okay, I'm going to take what we're supplied. This tonic water right here, and this is um, just from looking it up. The tonic water has a 0.08 molarity. So the tonic water, which is carbonic acid, is uh, 0.08 molar. And to do this lab, we need 50 mils. So I need, 50 mils. Okay, so this will be easy. I'm just going to take a graduated cylinder, put 50 mils in this, pour the 50 mils into my Erlenmeyer flask, okay? The trick is getting the right amount of the conjugate base, adding that in here, so the ratio between the acid and the base is this, 2.5 to one, 2.5 to one. Let me scoot these out of the way so you can see the board over there. Um, so let, let's figure this out. Um, first thing that we're going to have to do is 
I know that that ton of water is 0.8 molar, it's at 50 mils, but how many moles is that? Let's figure out the moles and that will give us our A right there. Um, so we have 0 0.08 moles per liter times 0.05 liters. I just divided 50 by 1,000 and we are going to get 0 0.004 moles of the acid, okay? So liters cancel and we have 0 0.004 moles of acid. Now I need to come up with this ratio. So if I have 2.5 moles of conjugate base for every mol one mole of acid, and then I say, okay, great. Well, in that 50 mils, okay, we've got 0.004 moles of the acid. Then how many moles do I need of base to maintain that 2.5 to 1 mole ratio? Let's do that. So 2.5 times 0.004, and we are going to get 0.010. So x is going to equal 0 0.010 moles of base. Okay, nice. We found the moles that we need of this sodium hydrogen carbonate. Um, so um, unfortunately, I cannot just go to a scale and, and weigh out uh, 0 0.01 moles. I have to weigh this in grams. So let's take this from moles of base to the grams. How many grams is that going to be? Um, so we've got 0 0.010 moles. That's of the hydrogen carbonate. Remember that's a conjugate base. So a little reminder, one mole of the hydrogen carbonate is in one mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate because that's what I'm weighing out. Remember when I dissolve this in the water, the sodium and the hydrogen carbonate dissociate. The sodium will be a spectator ion. Um, and then we can bring this to grams, and I looked up the molar mass on this, um, one mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate is 84.01 grams. So let's do that calculation, times 84.01 times 0.01, and we get 0.844 grams of the sodium hydrogen carbonate. Honestly, you guys, this was the hardest part as a lab, was just figuring that out. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my scale and weigh out 0.844 grams of that sodium hydrogen carbonate. I'm going to take my 50 mils. Remember, I measured out 50 mils of my tonic water. Put 50 mils in here. Now I'm going to add to it the 0.844 grams. Mix that up and guess what? We have a buffer with a pH of 6.8. Cool, nice. Um, so that's the first part, is you've got to do Henderson-Hasselbalch to find the ratio of conjugate acid to base. Then you're going to do just a little bit of work to find the amount that you need literally of the acid and the base that when you combine them together in the same solution, you have a ratio of moles. Okay, this was our ratio to get a 6.8. Now all we have to do is test it. Test it. So let me show you how we test it. Um, you're going to have an acid and a base titration that you do. Now remember, a buffer, sorry about that. Um, a buffer, we want it to stay within a plus or minus one pH. Um, I would do a 0.2 molar for the concentration that I have here. Um, I would do a 0.2 molar um, concentration of my sodium hydroxide and my hydrochloric acid, the base and the acid. And let me show you, I don't think you can see that. I, um, oops, I wanted you to be able to see, actually, do you know, I'll just lower this so you can see it. Um, I wanted you to see that I labeled this. See the little flags, the yellow and the orange right there, base acid. Just be careful that you know which one's which. Um, so I will take my 50 mils, divide this in two, I'll have 25 mils in one Erlenmeyer flask, 25 mils in another Erlenmeyer flask. And what we're going to do is with the pH probe, I will add a half mil of um, my base, record the pH, add a half mil. So I'm here, add a half mil, and I'm watching as I'm adding it, okay? I'm reading this, let me turn this for you. I'm watching, okay, I'm, I'm adding right here. I'm adding my half mil, record the pH. Add a half mil, record the pH. Add a half mil, record the, the pH. Honestly, um, we should be able to add at least 10 mils of each of these. And pretty cool, 
this will stay plus or minus one pH point. Um, when I add the base, um, it will go up to, after my 10 mils, it will go up to 7.8. And when I add the acid after 10 mils, it will go down to the 7.8. But you'll see this battle. Now when you're adding the acid, this conjugate base, the um, hydrogen carbonate will react with it. When I add the base, my sodium hydroxide, the acid, which is the carbonic acid, will react with it. So it stays really close to that 6.8 pH, pretty cool. Um, this is a great simulation of what happens inside of our blood. This is what happens in our body, the equilibrium um, with the carbon dioxide, the hydrogen carbonate, and the carbonic acid, kind of cool. Okay, so during this buffer lab, the overview, first you have to figure out the uh, mole ratio and then do the calculations of what you add for the acid and base to maintain that mole ratio and then you test it. You're going to add a half a mil of base record pH, keep doing that until you're one pH higher and then you add half a mil of the um, acid, record the pH after every half mil until you're one pH point lower. Um, and you'll be able to graph that and see the strength of that buffer. It's kind of cool. Okay, so there you have it, an overview on preparing a buffer and then how to test it, the buffer lab. Good work, have a good day.